like all survivors of the Holocaust, everybody's got a unique story. My mother, she said, yes, but ours is a bit more unique than the others. <laughs> uh, my father was German, Jewish, yeah. and he managed to escape from uh, Germany in 1933. And he came to Prague because he thought that was far enough to be safe. It wasn't, but if he hadn't come to Prague, he wouldn't have met my mother, and I would not be talking to you now. Yeah. Yeah. It was a whirlwind romance and they got married on the 15th of May, 1940, already under Nazi yeah. occupation. And then the following November, December, they were sent to Terezin, Theresienstadt, the first camp in Czechoslovakia. And your mother was obviously an extraordinary woman in terms of that whole period. Mind you, she always said that she was a very ordinary woman. They were both young, strong, and well able to work. So they were amongst the first transports that were sent to Terezin. Uh, my mother followed her a few weeks after my father yeah. uh, went, and they were there a remarkably long, very unusually long period of time. They were there for three years. Yeah. My father was sent to Auschwitz, deported uh, at the end of September 1944, and incredibly, my mother actually volunteered to follow him. She didn't have a clue where he'd gone because they didn't know anything about so she Auschwitz. she was just following him wherever Be yeah, he'd gone? because she was the eternal optimist, and she thought, well, as they had survived three years up to that point, she thought, well, nothing could get any worse. Little did she know, but she never, ever saw him again. When my brother Yizhi, that means George, he was born in February of 1944, he wasn't taken away from my parents, but he actually died of pneumonia two right. months later. Right. And his death meant my life and my mother's life. Because had she arrived in the Auschwitz-Birkenau death camp, holding my brother in her arms, they would have been sent straight to the gas chamber. But because she arrived in Auschwitz not holding my brother, and although she was pregnant again, this time with me, yeah. but it didn't show and it was very, very early on. Yeah, that's extraordinary. Yeah. And she is in Auschwitz for, in quotes, only 10 days, but she said it was 10 days of sheer hell on earth. Yeah. She said it was like Dante's Inferno. Yeah. But at the end of those 10 days, uh, she was amongst a group of young women, strong women, who were sent out of Auschwitz and they were sent to a slave labor camp in a place called Freiburg in Germany near Dresden, where um, they were in an armaments factory slave labor and she remained there for six months. That is from October of 1944 to the end of March of 45. And during those six months, she was becoming progressively more and more starved and more obviously pregnant, yeah. which was very dangerous for her. But fortunately, the Germans only realized she was pregnant after Auschwitz had been liberated, because had they realized beforehand, they would have sent her back to be killed. And we do know of cases where that did happen. The end of March, beginning of April of 45, uh, this is when the Germans realizing they were losing the war. This is when they began to evacuate the camps. And that's when the notorious death marches happened. Yeah. My mother wasn't on a death march, but she was put on a, yet another train. But this time it wasn't a cattle truck. This time it was a coal wagon, open to the skies and filthy. Oh. And during this 17 day nightmare of a journey, the train was stopped, the doors are open, the dead bodies thrown out, and a farmer walked by and he saw my mother, and he had such a shock. She described herself as looking like a scarcely living, pregnant skeleton. She weighed five stone, nine months pregnant. And this farmer brought her a glass of milk, but there was a Nazi officer standing near her, and he had a whip. And he raised his whip to show the height as if to beat my mother, if she accepted the glass of milk. But he didn't, and my mother thinks it was the look of sheer horror on the farmer's face that stopped the officer from beating her. And he lowered his arm, he didn't say anything. He lowered his arm and he let her have the glass of milk. She maintained that saved her life. Who knows, perhaps it did. And the train went on. Yeah. Every little detail is yeah. just <laughs> and, incredible. And eventually the train arrived in Mauthausen, which is in Austria near Linz. And it was one of the last camps to be liberated. And we arrive in Mauthausen, and um, there are three reasons why we survived. And the first is a very chilling one. On the 28th of April, 1945, the Germans had run out of gas for the gas chamber. My birthday is 29th. 
Second indirect reason why we survived was because on the 30th of April, Hitler committed suicide. And the last and the best reason why we survived was because on the 5th of May, the American army liberated the camp. My mother reckoned she wouldn't have lasted much longer. No, so that is incredible. So you were that timing down to yes. hours in the end, really. Hours, yeah, that's right. And she said it was luck. It was luck all, all along the way. Yeah. Uh, they think I weighed about three pounds. I was wrapped in paper. There were no baby clothes and no incubators as there would be now. The, the hours, the little things that in the end meant that mm. you and your mother survived, mm. the sort of real reminders of all those, tragically, the other side of the line, yes. the wrong timing, the yes. different timing, yeah, absolutely. the different decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, when my mother was strong enough to travel, uh, the Americans asked her if she wanted to be repatriated to Prague, and she did. And so we were put on yet another train, an ordinary train this time. We arrived back in Prague and my mother said that was the worst moment of her three and a half years incarceration because she only, you know, then realized what had probably happened to all the rest of her family, her parents, her sisters, her nephew, uh, uh, my three other grandparents yeah. and all the extended family. Such a compelling story. And we're talking about ordinary people. Ordinary people. That was obviously something hardwired with your mother. Well, she said she would never have predicted that she would have ever got through anything like that. But she used to say to me, she said, you don't know what you can withstand until you are put to the test. Yeah. How do you feel about that now when you sort of, you tell this story, incredible experience? Well, it's a wonderful story for me to tell. And also I feel that because my mother got got through so much and with us and and got through it all more or less intact. You know, the two of us, most of the family were killed. But she she said that she didn't have time to mourn either my father or my brother or all her family immediately after the war because she said she just had to live for me. She said I gave her a reason for living.